Len Brown, Brown's Custom Black Mesa Saddles and Trees, and uh, a very special saddle, and that is the Premier Spanish Trail. So it's a, basically made for the gated horse, it's made for possos, and uh, <clears throat> extremely comfortable, patterned in part after the old Portuguese saddles. But that's what you see in the front, and that's what you see in the cantle and the rear. What's in between is quite different from anything else you would buy, and that is the bar. They're my English bars from the Premier Dressage Orthoplex model and uh, deep seat saddle. But done the way I've done it here, has a gentle rise to the front, not the steep rise that the Orthoplex had. It does not sock you into position back here. It gives you a nice balanced seat in a tree, and it gives you a cantle. That's what you call wonderful <laughs> when it comes to comfort on the trail. The width for a woman's seat bones is fantastic. They're all on the neoprene padding underneath. There's three-eighths of an inch of neoprene in the seat. And uh, the saddle is only weighing 20 pounds. It is 23 inches long, finished here to here. It's a 15 and a half inch seat. This tree is a 16. It finishes out at 15 and a half. So it's <clears throat> something that I built a long time ago, but not with these bars. The old Orthoflex Paso Pleasure saddle was nowhere near the comfort of this saddle, nor the close contact. And the rigging on this saddle is our three position. Three slots. You work off the center slot with the Latigo strap, which will be attached here, which is well forward. It's about a seven eighths. If you move to here, you're forward of a full rigging. If you move to here, you're back about a five eighths. So what, you, what I do with this, you girth here, and you go back and forth to the girth with a latigo strap, which is nylon. I make them so there's no big lump or bump here. It's a very firm, thin nylon, high dollar. And uh, <clears throat> if your saddle slides too far forward on a, say, young horse that's downhill, you go to the front slot when you go to the last loop to the girth. Preferably, you'll have a couple of loops from here first. That, then, when you buckle up, will hold your saddle back. If you're on a big horse to level with big shoulders and you have it sliding too far back, you can go to the rear slot and hold the saddle forward. Last loop to the girth, the rear slot, it will pull your saddle forward. And that's basic geometry. The stirrup straps and fenders are flexible. None of this saddle is what you call too stiff, if you see what I mean. So there's a little break in here. The waist of the seat is kept as narrow as we can through the use of the loops where the stirrup strap is attached. The saddle is kept short. Excuse me, the pad wants to come up with the saddle. You have a crupper D-ring here, back here. You don't have to run the old Peruvian crupper <laughs> or any standard old crupper. You can get the never tight crupper. Unique in the fact it's elastic. It adds five pounds per inch of, ten of adjustment. Adds five pounds of tension to the tail. When you put never tight crupper on, hook it right here with a snap. You make contact at the tail, which would be a little tighter than you do a normal crupper. Then you tighten three holes with a strap that gives you the adjustment that lies in the sleeve above the elastic. That gives you 15 pounds of tension on the tail. As you get on your horse and ride, you watch him tuck his hindquarters, reach, put his head down, and go light on a bit. And that's the way horses have been trained for hundreds of years. Elastic's not a new thing. 
as the Spanish Riding School in Vienna. But that's the Nevertight Crupper, which is a great addition to this saddle. You have a full open channel down the middle. So if you've got a little paso with a backbone, you can see Spanish processes, you have clearance. He's free to move. The protector pad we talk about in other places is unique. I saddled most of the top Paso trainers in the industry of the Pasofino. I sold Orthoflex Paso saddles to the president of the Peruvian Paso Association in Peru. Two of them. I've been around the Paso world and I have ridden the horses. They are fantastic horses. This saddle will give you close contact. It'll give you a free moving horse. I'll show you a little bit more of how. This is not a large horse that this mold is made from. It's a 15 hand Arab with withers. But, number one, the stirrup loops give you a narrower waist to the tree than if you made a tree with a top and bottom groove for the stirrup straps. So we can give you a strong tree that's lifetime guaranteed. We make a, a little inset with a stainless steel that holds this loop. This loop is polished. And by doing that, we give you a narrower waist to the tree. But when you take the rise out of the old Orthoflex that came clear up into here, you have a more gentle, lower and slightly wider looking front to the seat. And it is a little bit wider, but not much. Certainly not as high and narrow as the old Orthoflex. You have a great flat spot in this seat. I put a centered flat spot in this seat, which you did not have in the old Orthoflex Premier, that was nearly so generous and centered as this. You go up, you come back, and you have a fantastic channel for comfort. So, the key to keeping the horse comfortable, eliminating the stirrup strap bump under the tree bar. Turn your saddle over. You might have a free and easy, no, it's not a free and easy, it's a freedom saddle and or whatever. Turn it over, see if it has a full slot underneath the bar for the stirrup strap. So many saddles made for the Paso, sold in the Paso world since I closed Orthoflex. I did not sell Orthoflex. The sorry excuse for saddles made after that with the Orthoflex name is because the name was uh, collateral for an 82,000 square foot building in Arkansas. And when I had four inches of water and 50 or 60,000 square feet of that 82,000 square foot building, I shut it down and I walked away and they can have the name. What we do here that uh, is similar to Orthoflex but not the same. I put the twist in the tree bar. I have twisted it to where you have a nice steep angle here. The bar twist out up here. We have clearance for the horses withers. No pinching on any withered horse with this tree. You have about a five and a half inch gullet, but that doesn't mean much. If I had a thicker fork front and rear, right here, the gullet gets wider. So this fork's thin. It sets at the very rearward part. It is not gullet width that keeps you from pinching. It's the angle. The contact at the bottom of the tree bars all the way up to about here. And then we lose it. Then we have space. This gets to the upper rib cage. And it's what keeps your shearing forces from happening. Too many trees that claim to have a great twist, like the Freedom Saddle, which looks more like a sawbuck pack saddle bar. It doesn't have any twist. This is twist. And it has a tight, tiny bit of flare but not much, but we have to have something hold the saddle up in front. It should be this on the upper rib cage so that the top of your bars are not squeezing 
to try and get past the wither with no support from down below. You'll find almost all saddle trees are 90 degree trees with a 45 degree angle on each side. This is not. To put the extra twist in this tree means that it's much steeper than that, much narrower in the basic twist because we're bringing it together at the bottom and front. It's narrower there so that you don't have to stick a bunch of padding under the saddle to make contact down here. And a protector pad here will give you balance shims. They go right under here. On a paso, you would hardly ever need all three of these balance shims, unless it was a really young, narrow horse or downhill horse. What I do with these shims is drop them down and away from the top as I drop them forward from the rear so that you pick up contact at the bottom. You don't make a tight spot at the top with a thick pad. Thick pads pinch withers on an already bad angle tree. Here, we don't pinch withers any way you go with a protector pad. Usually you're making space for the regular tree like the Freedom Saddle to keep from pinching. You're picking up contact at the bottom while you do such, and it functions. But it does not function as well for the rider because it hasn't got to see anything near this. Flowing right onto the horse. No lumps and bumps. No lumps and bumps in the rigging. And the flat, the basically the skirts holding the saddle to the horse with a very quite flexible skirt, in fact. It is, I don't use full thickness skirts all the way through. This is cut out. So this is like a yoke that is attached in the top and the bottom and the rear, at the top and the bottom and the front, and quite flexible right through here with one layer of not very thick saddle leather. This gives you your feel to the horse, which few saddles have. What allows us to do that without strip straps, biting in, rubbing, and creating fluid under the skin and white hair on the horse is this strip strap loop, giving you a free swinging strip strap and stirrups so you can do whatever you want with your legs. It's comfortable and it works well for training horses as well. So, the Paso saddle has evolved into something that is now the premier Spanish trail. A fantastic seat, a more English seat than you'll buy in any of the very cheap Pakistani Portuguese style Spanish saddles. They aren't much, folks. It's like riding on a uh, stuffed lazy boy chair on most of those. They look very pretty. They have very thick bars. They have no advantages for the horse whatsoever. Here you get a chance to pick it up, pick it all up from the shims and the protector pad, the uh, front and rear shims if you need them. Some horses can hold the saddle too high in front. You put in a rear shim, you balance the rider. Normally it takes one to two shims in front when your tree is behind the shoulders of the horse. And the protector pad is flexing in the front like this as the horse bends and turns, as the shoulders rotate. And if this saddle's in the way of that shoulder movement, it scoots it right back. This protects the shoulders and the body and the shoulders as it bends. The only thing like it, it's not stiff like Orthoflex was. It's molded to the shape of a horse in the front, molded to the shape of the loins in the rear, and moves very gently with them, but it's 10th inch thick aircraft interior plastic, and you have the capability of using the balance shims. The saddle was not balanced on this stand. When I put it on this pad, the stand was a little too wide. I put the rear balance shims in. What did I do? Balance the seat of the saddle so I can show you a saddle that's balanced. 
Now I'm going to show you the same saddle on this stand, which is a little wide. That is no longer balanced. Just throwing a rider back. This is the capabilities of the protector pad, much advanced over Orthoflex. The Orthoflex system was too stiff. Well, all the people out there that knocked it off, and all you riding these very stiff panels on the Orthoflexes <laughs> and the Orthoflex knockoffs after Orthoflex, Timberline and everything else. What you don't understand is the first Orthoflexes had panels that were molded to the shape of a horse. But when put under a tree and attached even loosely, they fractured at the attachments, so I replaced the first 150 sets of spring panels in the first 150 wore the flex saddles because after a year or a year and a half, they all fractured. I replaced them at my cost. That started with the flex. I could not use the panel molded to the shape of a horse. It even curved away at the rither area. Couldn't use it because it wouldn't hold up under a saddle very long. So I had to go to a flat plastic panel. I did everything in the world, including little rocker spacers, progressively loaded mountings, and finger, fingers with webbing in between and through rivets to work like the fingers on your hand. About two or three patents in all three, I guess it was. But I could never get it to function as well as the first one. This unit functions even better than the first. Molded to the shape of a horse, extensively slotted to move with a horse, but carrying my 230 pounds on a young horse that's very sensitive, pretty hot-blooded, and doing so with no pressures that could be found the morning after. Lynn Brown, I hope you've enjoyed this Paso. I'm a little too large for this saddle, but I'll give you an idea of what I've done with this fork. If I can get up on this tall stand, I've placed this fork so that it leans back. It gives you security that won't quit. I don't have any stirrups on this right now. But even myself in this 15 and a half inch saddle, which I normally ride a 17, is this is extremely comfortable and I could ride it with no real problem. So having that centered seat and having this fork the angle of your thigh gives you a saddle that will fit so many different sizes of riders with real comfort. It's unbelievable. I make a larger one, and I can make a smaller one. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on the Premier Spanish Trail. Thank you.